Let's look at a NAND gate. This is a special one. It's a Schmidt trigger NAND gate. It's actually a CMOS one that we're using, but I've actually shown you the TTL one and the CMOS one. These are two different ways of making logic gates. Don't worry about it for much now. And what we're going to do is look at the simple things you can do with the gate. Let's open the magic box and there we are. I've got the IC already inside and it's just pushed in across this gully along the middle. Which means now that we've got four little holes available for each pin of the IC. Another thing we also need to do, let's follow the convention of just having the IC with a little notch is cut out on the left hand side. And then that means the pins of the IC are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Lovely, lovely. Now, just like us, these integrated circuits need some food. But in this case, the food is its power supply. So we have the plus 5 volts goes in, and that normally goes to the top left-hand corner. That is the VCC line, or in this case VDD for CMOS. Then what we have is ground, and that goes, guess what, the opposite corner. Just push straight down, there you have the supply already. And then what we can do is just try the early circuit here. Let's try this one here. We're going to have the pulses coming from the pulse generator, and we're going to have a data switch. So there you are, it says J14 and J17. Let's do it, shall we? So J14 is going to go straight across the IC. Where is it going to go? Right, let's push in straight first. Well, the way this IC is organized is we've got four NAND gates inside and they're all pointing towards the center. So we have input, input, output and that's on the first gate. So let's go and see what that is. We've got the pulse switch coming in. We're going to pin one, that's an input. The other input can go to a data switch. And then let's see what happens. Now the only way you can see what happens is to connect the output to an LED. So we do that. Uh, let's have a nice yellow LED. So we just push straight in. This is a new board, so it's a bit tight. And we turn on, and the LED is on all the time. Oh no, it's not working. Well, it is working, it's just that the, at the moment, our switch is on zero, which means don't go through. But if we now put the switch to one, it means okay. Now it can flash, and that's what we're doing. We want to speed up the flash, it's easy, you just simply turn up the control to make it faster. Lovely, lovely. If you want to block this again, all you need to do is just turn off. It's a bit like a remote control. We're not actually just playing around with a wire straight from the pulse generator to the LED, but we are controlling from somewhere else. And it could even be through the internet or something like that.